doing? Yes. You're reaching my office. Now I can't get out. Completely unprofessional. Here we go. Oh, no, relaxed, you said. Relaxed. <laughs> Do I look good? Because I can't see. I'm not wearing my glasses. If you see the, that red button, can you see the red little... He can't see the red little circle. Something in my eye. Okay. He's crying. It's okay. really my first interview. <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Jim. And I'm Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? It's Kayla. And Jim. And welcome back to Meteorology Monday. Today, since we are both atmospheric scientists, I thought it'd be real cool to do a little Q&A session here and find out some of the differences between meteorology back then, which was when? 1992. And meteorology when I went to school and currently, which was 2017. I can't get my ears straight. That's our graduation years. Those, yeah. There was meteorology before 1992. <laughs> I promise you, there was. Weather started at least in 1988. As you know, if you've watched a previous Meteorology Monday or you follow us over on our blog, I went to school at UNC Asheville and I graduated with an ATMS degree, Atmospheric Sciences, uh, back in 2017, which was pretty recent compared to when Dad went to school, which was when and where? I went to school at State University in New York at Albany and I graduated in 1992 with a degree in atmospheric sciences. All right, since we just talked about school, let's first start off with how is being an ATMS student different today than it was then? Because obviously you saw what I went through with school and you know what you went through with school. So what's been different between the two? Uh, I think the biggest change is um, uh, the amount of involvement that computers play a role in meteorology now. Uh, back then we were still uh, we had die fax charts, which uh, was printouts um, off of a network. Uh, it would print out on computerized paper, and we would have to um, cut them up to size and hang them on clipboards on, on, a, on a pegboard. And um, that's how we would look at our weather data. Um, there was some computers when I, around time that I was graduating in 92. We started using a little bit more, but nothing like what we have today. Yeah, I don't know what half of what he said was, so obviously today we just use a lot of computers. We used paper back then. <laughs> okay, so elaborating on that a little bit more, you said that you didn't use computers very much, but what did you use computers for? Um, we did have some uh, uh, computers that gave us satellite imagery. Um, it was very expensive back in the day. Uh, we would get charged per product, um, so if you wanted to look at a loop, uh, a 24-hour loop of satellite imagery uh, on the Makita system back in the day uh, that was very very expensive so um, we actually had a specialized printer that would print out what looked like uh, Polaroid video uh, Polaroid uh, photographs back then um, on that special paper and we would have to thumb through it and kind of do a manual animation if we wanted to like of course one of those, I think like, I was the, that's right one of the little flip book things um, of course I think I was the one that introduced it to the to everybody else that they would scatter it all over the forecast table and I'd be like well look guys and I'd gather it up together in order and I'd flip through it and they'd be like wow that's awesome <laughs> so uh, things were very slow back then uh, <laughs> not not nearly as fast as what it is today uh, to get a 48 hour forecast from one of the models uh, it would take literally you know six to eight hours from its initiation time till it got to us uh, it was That's very cool. slow and then you still had to print it out and put it up on the pegboard clipboards uh, so a lot of things have come a long way since then that's crazy. All right, another question is, how has forecasting changed and what's different today with forecasting compared to back then, other than the obvious computer models yeah. and the pegboards and all your papers and stuff? <laughs> yeah. um, the ability to have more granularity. Uh, you can be more specific. Uh, your wind speeds, you can nail down wind speeds a little bit better, uh, not only speed-wise, but actually during the day, time, time frame-wise, too. Um, whereas we just kind of looked at it over the course of a 12-hour period, you know, you can get it down to, you know, every hour, you know, roughly, and just say, okay, at 2 p.m., the wind's going to be 18 miles an hour. At 3 p.m., it's going to be 17 miles an hour. You know, you have much more granularity because you have the information that's available. Definitely radar. Radar was a big thing that definitely improved since I was in school. We didn't Did have... Did you even have a radar back then? <laughs> <laughs> we did. Uh, I had to go out and spin it by hand by myself. Uh, seriously, um, you know, I say that, but but 
part of that is, is a little bit reality. Um, we did not have the Doppler radars like we do today. Um, they were early in their development um, and they were deployed at just a couple of places, but the uh, weather service offices that I was at, they did not have the Doppler. They still had the old uh, weather service radar 57 uh, that What's was designed in 1957. So what's, what's the uh, difference between a, the Doppler and that one? Um, it does not have the capability to use the Doppler uh, physics to identify uh, type of precipitation or direction in which it's going. Uh, it, those older radars, the weather service radar 1957 and this 1974, uh, those radars basically just uh, sent out a signal and then listened for it and said, okay, this is the distance where it is and at the direction that you pointed me in. And that's really all you got. And what wow. basically what we had to do was we would take um, <laughs> we'd have to use grease pencils on on this scope and we would trace it out with with radar paper that that it would see through and trace it out and we would basically do that every 15 20 30 minutes something like that and then compare the papers and see the blobs evolving and moving in that sense and that was basically our radar so i'm guessing if you had to do everything by hand back then with grease pencils you probably didn't really have computer models did you uh we did have computer models uh we had two of them back then uh the lfm model and the ngm model not to get into too much details but it did take a while for them to generate. They did not have the physics like we've got today, uh, the modeling physics. Um, they, it used to be 12 hour forecasts, that was the gap, instead mm -hmm. of three hours or one hour or whatever it is now. We didn't wow. have, have mesoscale models. I think nowadays you can get down to uh, a three kilometer grid point distance mm -hmm. and these models I think were somewhere in the hundreds of kilometers, like maybe 128 kilometers or something around that. How did you I, forecast? I think when the NGM went to 80 kilometers, I think we, we did backflips because, but <laughs> Going to 80 kilometers meant it took more time. Oh my gosh. To, to generate. And these were working on the fastest computers in the world back then. These computer models getting generated and it still took a long oh time. Gosh. That's how long, that's how far we've come. That's so. crazy. And it spent what, just like 40 years and all this has happened? Um, no, 50, 30 years. 20, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe 25, 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> she calls herself a math nerd. 40 years? How old is she trying to make me? I can't imagine, like, where are we going to be in another 25, 30 years? Mm -hmm. All right, let's move away from the techie stuff a little bit and get into more of the mainstream questions in meteorology. So my next question is, do you get asked the same questions back then that we all do today? Like, are you on TV or this, that, or anything? Yeah, uh, exactly. The two questions I would get asked most of the time is, so are you on TV? Or what's the weather going to be tomorrow? <laughs> Sounds about right, still ask that today. If you haven't seen, go ahead and check out my other video on... He's distracting me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the pop-ups. I'm trying to promote something. So if you haven't seen already, I did a top eight questions that meteorologists get asked all the time, and I'll have that pop up in one of these corners up here right now if you're interested in checking that out. All right, so my next question is, since we are currently storm chasers, and that's what we love doing the most, and since you've been chasing storms for a long time, how has storm chasing changed for you over the years? Wow, uh, mobile technology, number one. Um, you know, everybody's got a cell phone and they have a radar app. Uh, that's, that's one of the uh, best things that you can have. Um, yeah, it makes it super simple. A lot of times uh, you'll be chasing and we'll get those alerts, severe thunderstorm, tornado mm -hmm. warning or whatever for your area. Uh, didn't have that back then. Photography equipment was a lot different back then. Nowadays you can even have cameras with lightning triggers on them and so you can get better yeah. lightning back then. <laughs> You know, if you tried the best you could and you just pointed and just go, I hope this works. You just use like disposable cameras back then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of chasers that will use their laptops with, uh, you know, mobile air cards and, and have data. And, you know, so much has been able to help chasers uh, be able to chase and, yeah. and get the footage that they need compared to, you know, many years ago. I started in 1985, so a lot has changed since then. That's 40 years. She did minor in math, I think. So that's 35 years. We're gonna move on now. What? 34, isn't it? 34. I don't know what year it is. And our last question of the video is, what in meteorology has changed the most over the years? Other than the technology, we kind of touched on that, we kind of touched on school, but what's been like the number one thing that always stands out? Um, besides technology, I think uh, public awareness. 
you know, making people more aware of, of the weather that's going on, how it impacts them. I mean, people knew back then, you know, but I think we've added a layer, the next layer of awareness and seriousness uh, yeah. to, to forecasting and trying to educate the public and how difficult it is sometimes to forecast. And yeah, sometimes we don't get it right because we're still, uh, you know, have instrumentation and stuff that's not able to capture everything. Uh, but we've gotten remarkably better over the years. But I'd say, yeah, public awareness has definitely increased over the last 30, 40 years. Yeah, that's a really good one. So there's a little bit of a look into what meteorology was like back then in 1990s compared to what it is now in 2019. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe down below and click that little bell that lets you know every time we post a video so you never miss seeing a Meteorology Monday. And also, don't forget, Tech Thursdays posted every Thursday. You can learn more about the technical side of meteorology. That'll be linked below along with our Patreon page that lets you guys help support our channel and help us fund chase trips and stuff like that so we always get the best content for you guys. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And happy evolving into the meteorologist you were born to be. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And happy meteorology. <laughs> oh my god. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And happy meteorology metamorphosing. <laughs>